Welcome to episode 3 of Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Uh, so when we left off, we were just getting started rebuilding our clan. Uh, we won in the arena, and I think we should be able to finish up rebuilding our clan here in this episode. So very excited to get our clan to tier 1. Um, let's go ahead and talk to Osarios uh, here in Phasos. Uh, he wants us to deliver the herd to Carbenseth. Go ahead and grab his quest. Yeah. Uh, Ted Midland's Paw Free. All right. And talk to Leafris the Wheeler. We will definitely deliver his urn to Carbanseth. Let's see how far away that is. Ooh, that's super far. That's all the way up here in the north. That's crazy. So it looks like we've got a bit of a trip that we've got to make, uh, which shouldn't be too, too bad. Let's upgrade some of our recruits before we set out. Awesome. I think we are almost full on troops here at the moment. Um, yeah, we've got 22 out of 22. Awesome. So let's go ahead. We can swing through Rote to see if there's anything. Um, ooh, look, some looters. <laughs> ooh, a squirrel. Let's see if we can catch up to them. Awesome. So we're just going to quickly fight the looters. Um, and it is 22 versus 6, so I think we can send in our troops. And let's see the result. Awesome, we've gotten by unscathed. We've gotten some renown, some morale, uh, some more prisoners. We'll definitely take those. And yeah, a bunch of loot as well. I don't think any of this is going to be too useful for us, but we can definitely sell it when we stop by town. So yes, we're going to swing by Rote um, to see if they've got anything useful for us. Let's see. Um, trade. Okay, we can actually sell some leather that we have to them, which will be a pretty decent opportunity to make a little bit of money. Um, and all this armor we can definitely offload as well. And let's see if they have any food for us to buy. Oh, they've got plenty of grain at a decent price um, and some fish as well. So now we should be, yeah, we've got food for almost a month um, at a great price. So definitely super happy about that. Um, looks like we've got someone in the tavern that we could recruit into our party if we wanted. He's a robber. So he's pretty decent at roguery. Um... Hmm, I think we will hold off on him. I'd love to get someone that provides a more passive bonus to our party. So it's definitely okay, I think, for now to be shopping around. Um, yeah, beyond that, there's no one in the keep, so I think we can go over to the next town. Yeah, so this game is definitely um, more unstructured and more freeform. There's a little bit of grinding involved at some points. Um, oh, whoa. All right, I'm going to stop over by Garrisigo's castle to see if there's any nobles inside, if we can get in without paying the bribe. Yeah. Okay, so we can talk to Sejuron over here. He's got a quest for us. I think we also want to ask him about um, the history quest. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pendrake? He wasn't there. He knows Lucan has some thoughts on it. Okay. So he doesn't have anything too much for us. Um, oh, oh no, he won't let us uh, do the quest. He's never heard of our clan, oh no. Well, that's another um, incentive for us to go ahead and rebuild our clan. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Um, ooh, so we've noticed that he has not yet taken a wife. He's considering offers. Let's offer our hand in marriage. We've added our name to the list. Um, okay, let's see if he wants to, um, let's spend some time together. How old is this guy, by the way? What if he's like a boomer? Anyway, um, I feel lucky to live in an age where a valiant warrior can, can okay, that's not exactly written correctly, but we've got a 94 chance to succeed, so, uh, we're gonna say some gibberish to him. All right, we might be correct. Uh, between the followers, the rivals, and the enemies, we must have met a lot of interesting people. Ah, uh, yes, I've seen cruelty, degradation, and degeneracy like you wouldn't believe. Fascinating stuff, all of it. All right, we love um, our internet degenerates out there. Shout out to those. So we're going to tell them about our journeys on the internet um, with all the degenerates on Reddit. Anyway, um, yes, we might be correct about that. 
Some people say you will go far. Suppose you were to rise to a position of power. What would you do? Okay, so it looks like these both have a 94 chance to succeed here. We're pretty, we're getting on with them super well. Like these are all really high um, odds here to um, uh, uh, seduce him. So it's pretty much up to us, I think, what we can say. Um, let's say we have a long list of scores to settle. You can be sure of that. Oh wow, awesome! We've succeeded at persuading him. Um, so yeah, okay, he's 35 years old. He's a, um, a noble within the empire, and he's part of the Western Empire. Wow, he has super high skills. He's a very skilled person. So he's part of the Sorados clan, and he's tier 2. Well, it seems we have a fair amount in common. Perhaps you can talk more when we meet again. So I think we have to give him a little bit of space there. We have to play a little bit hard to get before we continue seducing him. So I'd say that was a pretty good uh, attempt at seduction there. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and um, see if we can mark him or start tracking him so that we know to be able to talk to him again in the future. Um, I think, let's see, I don't think there's a way to track him. I think we can only track his castle. So we're going to go ahead and put a tracking dot on this castle here, and then it'll show up on our HUD um, no matter where we are. It'll be super easy for us to find. And yeah, we'll continue on to Car Banseth. So yeah, this game is super freeform, so a lot of it will be traveling around um, and kind of grinding out, whether it be renown, influence, um, whatever that might be. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities to like have this be a really chill playthrough. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of see where that goes, I think. All right, we've gotten here to Sionan, which is the next settlement on our way. Um, and it's got Lath the Scholar, who's a really good medic. Wow. So let's see if we can talk to him and invite him to join our party. Um, he doesn't think he knows us. All right, let's say your name. Hmm. Many men would begin their story by reciting their ancestry. I will not do this. A man should be judged on his own deeds, and a long list of ancestors does him no credit. Also, my family does not acknowledge me, so why should I acknowledge them? I was the son of a slave. My father, a judge, raised me in his house, but, if, but it was clear that he would never spend much time to ensure my success in the world. Still, I was tutored with his other sons and chose to study medicine as a young man. I thought I could perhaps be a physician. Um, so I'm not sure he's a son of a slave, but his father was a judge. I don't I don't get it. it seems like he's lying to us. Doesn't know his own story. Um, well, I was soon disabused of this idea. A doctor starting out in the world must either have a great deal of money or a family that insures him a long list of clients. I had neither. Instead of working in the city, I took service aboard a ship. Professionally, it was perhaps the best thing I could have done. Fevers, injuries, festering sores, the seaman has in a greater number and a variety than any matter of land dweller I imagine. But I have little patience for life aboard. The, mon the monotony, the tyranny of the captains, and the lack of any space to oneself, the groaning of timbers, the constant smell of rotten bilge. Um, gr great. Okay. Yeah, it must be terrible. At any rate, I have a bit of money to my name and the leisure to wait a few weeks before choosing my next employer. Right now, I'm between jobs, so if you've gotten any work for me, I'm willing to discuss it. I can use someone like you in my company. Very well. I'm going to need about uh, 1959 gold dinar to settle up some debts. Can you pay? So we've gotten a little bit more than that in our um, bank account. So I definitely think this is a pretty fair price to have a very skilled medic join our party. So we've paid 1959 and we've got Lath the Scholar as our first companion. And he is ready to join our party. Awesome. So let's go ahead and jump to our uh, clan management here. And so we've got Latha Scholar, he's in our party, and we can actually make him our surgeon, um, which will provide some passive bonuses to us as we continue on. We can actually choose a passive bonus for ourselves. Um, so we can choose between scouting, engineering, um, and quartermastery, which is, where is our quartermaster skill? Steward, yeah, which is at 10. Um, I think we will do the quartermaster skill. It's probably just the most appropriate given how early we are in the game. It'll let us expand our party size a bit. 
So now we're getting uh, passive bonuses from both our clan members, from ourselves, and from our friend Lath the Scholar. So that's awesome. Um, super excited about that. Yeah, I don't think there's too much else that we're going to be able to do here in Sionan. Uh, we've got plenty of food. We've got food for something like a month. So I think we can continue on on our quest. Before I do that, I've definitely been thinking about changing the difficulty. We've got everything pretty much on minimum. So what I'm going to do is put um, everything on the second notch, except I will keep map movement speed on very easy, just because it's so annoying to be chasing after your looters um, and anyone else in the open world. So I definitely just don't want to waste too much time doing that, so I will keep it on very easy. Um, and I'm also going to enable death and auto allocate clan member perks. Um, enabling death will allow us to have a more dynamic world in terms of people throughout the world will always be dying and there will be a lot of succession uh, and as well as some turnover within our own party so hopefully that'll be an exciting change of pace there. Um, and clan member perks will just be allocated for us which means a little bit less um, fidgeting in the menus so it's pretty nice that they've included that here within early access. We're almost here to Kakar Banseth. Um, we've got plenty of prisoners, so I think we might actually want to ransom off some of the prisoners that we have in our party, especially these level 1 looters, um, who can't be upgraded without a perk, so they're kind of use useless to us. We've gotten 65 gold from doing that. Awesome. Let's see, so I think we're here to talk to Leifris, the wheeler, uh, who's got a quest for us, but mostly we do want to deliver our sheep to him. Okay, let's see if he'll take those sheep. Yeah. How much money is he going to give us? 400. Yeah, that's definitely not bad. Um, oh, wow, we've got a couple of graphical problems there. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's it's uh, less money that we w would have gotten from stealing the sheep, but at least we don't have a bad reputation. So there's plenty of quests here in this town. Um, let's see what these quests are. We can uh, buy some raw materials for Leafris. We can... Uh, deal with an army of poachers, we can fence stolen goods, or we can deal with a rival gang. Let's go ahead and see about that army of poachers and get some nice uh, combat going here in this episode. Awesome. Let's see. Yeah, so there's an army of poachers that we can deal them in Bog Beth. It's like Hurricane Katrina, um, except a bog and a bet. Beth, a, a Beth. So we're able to uh, send our friend um, over there to do it with 12 of our men and that can kind of go on in the background. So I think we might, that might be a decent solution. Um, so, but 12 men is half of our um, troops here, but it is kind of going to go on in the background while we can do something else. So I'm not too upset about that. Okay, so after a little bit of finagling, I have figured it out. The deal is that you need at least 12, meaning you need 13. Um, so kind of convoluted there. I'm not super happy about that. Um, but we should be good to send those guys off. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know why this town has this weird graphical glitch going on. Uh, hopefully we won't be spending too much time there. So now we ourselves can grab another quest. Um, should we investigate this rival gang? I hope it doesn't give us a criminal reputation within um, this area here. That would be not good. Um, but it will go away after a while if we do get that. So let's see what she has. Um, her name is Ira the Goat. Isn't that the person we just talked to? What do you want me to do? Okay, she wants us to meet here after three days uh, to fight against the other gang. Yes, so... She wants us to come back in three days. I'm guessing if we miss that time, it will fail the quest. Let's see. Come back after three days. So we could just wait around. Um, let's see. I want to see if our noble friend is available to talk to us again. Okay, we've made it to Gersigo's castle where our husband-to-be, Sejuron, is. So let's go ahead and talk to him and see if he is ready for some more seduction. Oh, he says we're lovely as ever. All right, let's discuss a future together. Well, he's also been thinking about that. Oh no, so it looks like our odds here are not as high. 
Um, hopefully he will be uh, seduced by our excellent charm here. So he needs a partner who he can trust. Whatever oath I give to you, you may be sure that I'll keep it. Alright, he buys it. He buys that we will keep our oath. Um, I think you should try to win my family's approval. Hmm, okay. So again, we've got just like a 60% chance to succeed. These are almost the same. So we can either tell them about our loyalty or our virtues. Um, let's keep the loyalty train going. Success? Oh, wow. He's very happy to hear that. So he's honored to accept our marriage proposal. A little bit backwards. Um, typically, you'd think in this time, it's very traditional that the man gives the blessing. Um, but yes, so now we have to talk to... Who? Uh, we have to talk to his father, I, I'm guessing, to be able to um, get his permission, which is, again kind of seems like the backwards system, given our genders here. So I think Saratus here is uh, the man to talk to. And let's see if we have enough money to bribe him off at this point. I'd like to discuss the final terms of my marriage with Sejuron. Let's see how much money he wants. Oh no, we don't have nearly enough, I think. I think this bar has to be full for him to accept. Oh, we do have enough money. Yeah, he only needs like 200 some gold to be able to accept. 208, exactly, okay. So we're gonna gift him his uh, little dowry, which is strange anyway. Uh, we're getting three skill points and charm. Okay, and we're gonna conduct the ceremony. Now I wonder, does he go anywhere? Like, does anything happen at this point? I think he just goes to chill. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, looks like that's it. Where is our lovely husband to be, Sajuron? He's up there. So we've done it. We've married the first person we've come across, which is always an accomplishment. Um, he's shorter than us. He's so much shorter than us. I'm I'm having so many second thoughts. So what a wedding! I look forward to a happy married life with you. Um, yes. Okay. I want you to join my party. Awesome. So now he's in our party. So we've got a party of three. Um, let's assign him a role. He can be our scout. He's honored to be our scout. Awesome. Farewell, my wife. He's so tiny. Look at him. Oh no. I'm, I have big regrets about this, like, this is just some random dude, you know, and we're so charming that we really could have had a chance with anyone, so maybe we uh, went a little bit too quick there, we dove in a little too fast. But hey, now we're married, um, let's take a look at our party, or clan, yeah, there he is. Oh, wow. Oh, he looks super fancy, look at him. Dang, we're just out here with our, like, tattered stuff. We've got Lath, uh, he's got a cool outfit as well. But dang, Sejuron, like... <laughs> awesome, that's funny. He's got zero in scouting, so he's a terrible scout, but he's gonna go ahead and do that anyway. Um, he's not good... Oh, he is a decent steward. Okay, well, we'll make him the quartermaster in that case, and we can be the scout. Perfect. So we are now married, um, and let's go back and continue our quest. Okay, so while we were traveling, we ran into Melodir here. Let's ask him about the Battle of Pendrake. Well, King Kaladag's great victory. Who would dare say anything to tarnish its shine? King Errol disappeared while hunting, and Kaladag becomes king. He leads the tribes to war. Oh, we were eager enough, even though Errol made a truce with the Emperor, sealed by oath. We were dazzled with the prospect of vengeance. Who cares about our sacred word and honor? The ambush, masterfully planned and executed, that none can deny. But I will also not deny that the Sturgeons fought the main body of the Imperial forces, and the Vlandians fought their famous cavalry, so I don't think the greatest glory went to the sons of Batania. At the end of the day, what have we gained? The Sturgeons hate us worse than ever. The Vlandians, too. The Empire, I suppose, is shattered. What can I say? It believes, I believe that war should have a goal, but I'm a minority, it seems, among our people. Awesome. 
So we are starting to get a taste for some of the politics and exactly what's going on between the factions. Um, and so as he alluded to, the Empire, which is this purple stuff here, is broken into three pieces and it'll be interesting to see exactly which faction is able to come out on top um, and who we align to. Um, I think it's interesting that this green faction only has like five uh, settlements. Actually, maybe that's... It looks like a little bit less than some of the other ones have, so... But it looks super tiny, so I was like, hmm... Anyway, let's continue to care Banseth and see if we're ready to finish that quest. Are you ready for the fight? I am ready. Okay, so we'll see how this works. We'll see if we get a criminal reputation as well. Something that we hopefully want to avoid, but we do need the money to get us started here. Oh wow, they're just ready. Come in and fight me, eh? Did Fianara put you up to this? Look, there's no need for bloodshed. This town is big enough for all of us. But if bloodshed's what you want, she's happy to provide. What I want to say is, you don't need to be a part of this. I'll double whatever she's paying you if you join us. She looks a lot like us. Alright, well, she's willing to buy us off, um, which is very tempting. We are in this for the money. Uh, we're definitely not here because we want to choose sides within the gang warfare. So let's agree. Oh, wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Wow. We, we got absolutely chopped there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is this us? Oh, no. Yeah, so that was maybe not super wise, because um, obviously we did have... We, we were, like, on the side of the battlefield of the people that we turned against. So they were able to very much gang up on us. Uh, we still don't have a shield, so it was super difficult for us to defend ourselves. And I did turn the difficulty up there, so... Yikes, we have six uh, dead on our side, unfortunately. Yikes. Well, at least we got our money. We were super injured, unfortunately, but... Um, yeah, all is well that ends well in this game. Let's see if we have any shield that we can equip. Yeah, we do. I'm not sure why we haven't uh, gotten around to that. So we can replace either our hatchet or our mace. Not sure which one's going to be better. Whichever one has more reach, I think. So, yeah, 56, 65. Yes, let's equip this here. Awesome. So hopefully they'll have a little bit less of that in the future. Jeez. Awesome. I think I am going to end the episode here for now. Um, wow, so much happened in this episode. I wasn't expecting that. We got married, we did, I, we cleared out a camp of poachers, and uh, we got absolutely clobbered there at the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. There's definitely going to be a lot more of Mountain Blade to come, so I will definitely see you in the next one.